Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to do a fiddle lesson on the pentatonic scale. So you've no doubt heard of the pentatonic scale and you may have some idea what it is or you may have no idea what it is. But I'm going to explain what it is, why it's so common in folk music of all different kinds and how it's useful for the fiddle player. I will do a separate video for the pentatonic scale for improvising fiddlers. But we'll come to that uh, in a few weeks time. So you can think of the pentatonic scale in a lot of different ways. You can think of it as a uh, starting off with a major as a scale which leaves out the fourth and the seventh notes or the fourth and seventh degrees. You could think of it as a series of intervals which would be tone, tone, tone and a half, tone. Um, and for Americans I believe a tone is one step and a half is uh, a semitone is a half step. Um, you could think of it as a melody. Uh, so th think of this melody. <laughs> If you can sing that melody, then you can transpose it and sing it in other keys. Da 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 And that will be very helpful when it comes to trying to play it in different keys. Or you can think of it as a set of fingerings. So in G, open one two, open one three. Open one two, open one three. So as I said, we've missed out the fourth note, which is that one and the seventh, which is that one. Now, moving to the D major pentatonic, if you start there, see if you can play it yourself. It should sound like this. Doing exactly the same in A, starting on an A. Uh, you could try singing it, starting there. You could try working it out, or you might just be able to play it. So by now, having done three of them, uh, if I tell you to do the pentatonic scale in C, just by ear, then starting there, there's a fair chance you may be able to work it out, it actually sounds like this. Uh, of course, a pentatonic scale is not just one octave, it can go up and down beyond that. Um, so. Uh, if we're doing F, then we'll take it up to the top of first position and down to the bottom of first position. And I always think it's useful when you go down to the bottom to come back up uh, to the tonic, just uh, so you remember what scale it is you're doing. And um, I didn't actually mention at the beginning, pentatonic means five notes, uh, pent being five. So that's what it's all about. And strictly speaking, there are a lot of different pentatonic scales. For example, in Japanese music, there are completely different five note scales. Um, but I'm talking about the standard Western pentatonic scale. So why are pentatonic scales so useful? One thing is that they have a light and airy feel, which makes them ideal for um, making melodies. And because of the notes that have been left out, then everything harmonises and all adjacent sets of notes make melodies of some kind. And I discovered as a child uh, something special about the black notes of a piano. If you put your arm <laughs> across all the black notes, then uh, magically, it's harmonic, whereas white notes are not. And another illustration would be uh, an imaginary uh, classroom full of five-year-olds, each with a little xylophone in front of them. If you give them an eight-note scale and they all hammer away, it'll be absolute bedlam. If you give them the five notes of the pentatonic scale and they all hammer away randomly, then it will actually sound rather wonderful.
because all of those notes, no matter how they played, are going to harmonize. And so that's the case um, with folk melodies. That's why they found uh, very commonly in England, Ireland and Scotland, in America, old time and bluegrass music, and also uh, very often in Hungarian music and even Chinese music. So, um, very easy to recognize, very easy to play. Here's a little um, Irish polka called the Britches Full of Stitches. It's one of the ones that people often learn when they're beginning. So the scale will be... And the tune goes... finger patterns of these tunes makes it easier to learn new tunes um, if you recognize that they are pentatonic. If you're sitting in a session and someone launches into a pentatonic tune uh, you may not know it but if you recognize it's pentatonic then you can easily get your fingers around it and you can predict more easily what the next notes are going to be. And the pentatonic is also a very good vehicle for writing your own first tune because it's much easier to write a tune in a pentatonic scale than it is in a normal scale. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about minor pentatonics. Um, every major scale has what's called a relative minor which shares all of the same notes but ends a third below the tonic of the major scale. So if uh, we've got a G major scale if we start not there but on the E That's all of the same notes as that, but we're starting in a different place, and that is the relative minor. And the pentatonics are just the same. So the G major pentatonic is the relative major of E minor. So that's uh, very useful, and it makes it um, that you don't have to learn a separate set of minor pentatonics because they're all exactly the same. You just have to be able to recognize the relationship between one and the other. And a good tune to illustrate this is the Sky Boat Song, uh, which starts in G major pentatonic and goes to E minor pentatonic. because it's equally useful for those kind of players as it is for folk players. Uh, many Appalachian tunes in America uh, use the minor pentatonic. In this context it's often referred to as the mountain minor or minor modal. And what's peculiar about this is that the minor pentatonic scale melody is played over major chords, uh, which is a very unusual concept, uh, especially for a classical player to get their head around. Uh, I'm going to play the tune that I played at the beginning, which is Lonesome John. Uh, what is quite normal with these kind of tunes um, is to bend the notes ever so slightly. Because we've got an A major chord, then there's a big clash between the C natural, for example, and the C sharp implied by the chord. So you can play the minor. and just bend ever so slightly out from the minor towards the major. Uh, uh, very interesting, there's lots of great tunes like this uh, and there's lots of these on my fiddle channel. Let's play that one.
would like a copy of the dots that I've used for this, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email and I will send you a free PDF. If you are really enjoying my videos and would like to help support what I'm doing, then please do consider joining me on Patreon. I'll play you out with uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken?